I'm going to end by reading the opening lines of my book written about ten years ago, Unweaving the Rainbow, lines that I have long earmarked to be read at my funeral. We are going to die, and that makes us the lucky ones. Most people are never going to die because they're never going to be born. The potential people who could have been here in my place, but who will in fact never see the light of day, outnumber the sand grains of Sahara. Certainly those unborn ghosts include greater poets than Keats, scientists greater than Newton. We know this because the set of possible people allowed by our DNA so massively outnumbers the set of actual people. In the teeth of these stupefying odds, it is you and I, in our ordinariness, that are here. We live on a planet that is all but perfect for our kind of life, not too warm and not too cold, basking in kindly sunshine, softly watered, a gently spinning green and gold harvest festival of a planet. Yes, and alas, there are deserts and slums. There is starvation and racking misery to be found. But take a look at the competition. Compared with most planets, this is paradise. And parts of Earth are still paradise by any standards. What are the odds that a planet picked at random will have these complacent properties? Even the most optimistic calculation will put it at less than one in a million. Imagine a spaceship full of sleeping explorers, deep-frozen, would-be colonists of some distant world. Perhaps the ship is on a forlorn mission to save the species before an unstoppable comet, like the one that killed the dinosaurs, hits the home planet. The voyagers go into the deep freeze, soberly reckoning the odds against their spaceships ever chancing upon a planet friendly to life. If one in a million planets is suitable at best, and it takes centuries to travel from each star to the next, the spaceship is pathetically unlikely to find a tolerable, let alone safe haven, for its sleeping cargo. But imagine that the ship's robot pilot turns out to be unthinkably lucky. After millions of years, the ship does find a planet capable of sustaining life, a planet of equable temperature bathed in warm starshine, refreshed by oxygen and water. The passengers, Rip Van Winkles, wake stumbling into the light. After a million years of sleep, here is a whole new fertile globe, a lush planet of warm pastures, sparkling streams and waterfalls, a world bountiful with creatures darting through alien green felicity. Our travellers walk entranced, stupefied, unable to believe their unaccustomed senses or their luck. The story asks for too much luck. It would never happen. And yet, isn't it what has happened to each one of us? We have woken after hundreds of millions of years of sleep, defying astronomical odds. Admittedly, we didn't arrive by spaceship, we arrived by being born. And we didn't burst conscious into the world, but accumulated awareness gradually through babyhood. The fact that we gradually apprehend our world, rather than suddenly discovering it, should not subtract from its wonder. Of course, I'm playing tricks with the idea of luck, putting the cart before the horse. It is no accident that our kind of life finds itself on a planet whose temperature, rainfall and everything else are exactly right. If the planet were suitable for another kind of life, it is that other kind of life that would have evolved here. But we, as individuals, are still hugely blessed, privileged, and not just privileged to enjoy our planet. More, we are granted the opportunity to understand why our eyes are open, and why they see what they do in the short time before they close forever. Thank you very much.